In the last uh, three or four years, we've launched 10 new medicines uh, in the U.S. and around the world, and that's really driving our growth this quarter and in the past quarters as well. Uh, revenue up 7% and uh, uh, good cost control in the middle of the income statement, uh, EPS growth of 32%. And we're excited about the next wave of growth as well. We're investing in R&D and uh, products um, like we unveiled a mid-stage study for a product called Trizipatide uh, oh, here good. at the beginning what? of October. Say that again. Who came up with that? Who came up with that? Can't you hire someone? I mean, not all the words in the English language are already taken except for trisipatide, are they? Well, that's the generic name. We'll later give it a brand name that'll be easier to talk about on TV. Okay. But uh, it's an exciting medicine that builds on the success of these so-called GLP-1 agonists that work with your body to use glucose and insulin better. And uh, dramatic weight loss and and uh, great glucose control in that mid-stage study. So products like that are, are fueling uh, some of the excitement about Lilly as well. You had 12% volume growth and seven on the, on the revenue side. So I guess you can point to uh, that you're not, uh, you're, you're trying to do the, what politically is the, the right thing to do in terms of pricing. You, can, you have some bragging rights there that, that, uh, that that's not how you're getting the increase in revenues from raising prices? It's certainly not. In fact, pricing was a bit of a drag this quarter. Now, uh, a piece of that is U.S. list price. It's actually probably a small piece, but as you know from, we've talked before, the biggest um, driver for us is often um, the use of medicines in lower price channels. That was the biggest driver for us in the U.S. One of our uh, uh, products, Basiglar, uh, was adopted into these uh, Medicaid, Medicare Part D program for seniors, and those prices are relatively lower because the government gets a better deal. And uh, we also saw actually more uh, free goods to patients to start on products like Hemolog or insulin and TALTS, the psoriasis medicine. Those are the biggest drivers. Of course, if we had raised prices, which we didn't in the quarter, that could have offset some of that. Um, but overall, it's a volume growth story. 17% volume growth in the U.S., that's a, that's a strong performance for us. So if the, the new initiatives that... Uh that the administration has put forward. You're not, you're not a huge fan. We've had uh, the, the, the gentlemen that, uh, that you know, are behind that push. We've had both of them. We've had uh, Scott Gottlieb. He's not necessarily part of it, but he certainly made a case for it where I was surprised because he's a big free market guy. And Azar also um, more or less says this is, it, it's not that outlandish to think that there could be some some negotiating power to use the, the heft of how many patients you have, maybe you should be subject to more competition. Or I, I thought importing price um, controls from abroad doesn't make sense, but they explained it in a different way. Why don't you like it? Well, we don't like it. Just to step back, when they launched the blueprint, what I've said here and in other places is there are some things we like, some things where we could work with the administration to shape, to support free market principles, as you say, and pro-innovation and at the same time reduce prices for patients. And then there's some ideas we didn't like. And amongst those that we don't like, importing price controls from Europe is, is high on that list. Is that really what it is, though? That is to, what it to is. Get a yeah, these, to get an average list price, that's? That is what, what they announced, which is to reference uh, a dozen or so European markets, by the way, including markets like Greece and Slovakia, which have much lower GDP per capita, taking government-run system prices and bringing them to the U.S., we think that's a, that's a race to the bottom uh, here in the U.S. for innovation and could really stifle what are some of the most exciting breakthroughs we see today, like cell therapy, immuno-oncology. All of those products will be directed into the Part B program. So we don't like that idea at all. We'd rather see them focus on creating a robust biosimilar market. A number of those top sellers they reference wanting to save money on are already subjected to biosimilar competition abroad. Uh, I'd like to see them really uh, step up and reform biosimilar policies here in the U.S. Hey, Dave, the, uh, Scott Gottlieb, who's the head of the FDA, was here with us talking about these uh, plans. And he's a Republican. He's been with the FDA a long time. He's also a doctor. Um, he tends to be a pretty straight shooter. He says he's in favor of these rules, which surprised me a little bit at, at first until he explained why. He also said that the drug companies... Um, we're all in favor of these rules when it locked in higher prices. It was when it locked in lower prices that drug companies turned against it. Is, is there a way, it sounds all, also though, that this is a, a move to try and negotiate from the administration. What would be a, a negotiation that you would find appropriate that maybe some moves you could give the administration that, that would be less than this? Right, well, uh, in late October when they rolled this out, there were three ideas they rolled out. I think two of them we can work with the administration on. They've been around before, and, and we have ideas on how to shape them to, again, embrace 
innovation, lower costs for patients, uh, but also use market forces versus government, uh, foreign government forces to lower our prices. I didn't uh, hear what, what Dr. Gottlieb said on your show, but certainly the idea of uh, foreign reference pricing is a bad one. We would be supportive of uh, piloting uh, this competitive acquisition program, looking at um, models like we have in Medicare Part D, that's the pharmacy um, delivered medicines, and using similar mechanisms uh, for physician administered drugs. That, that's something I think the industry, certainly Lilly, would be constructive on um, as an example. Um, but foreign reference pricing, we don't like.